And here is the Writer's Almanac for Thursday. It's the 24th of May, 2018. It's the birthday of the novelist Michael Shaban, born in Washington, D.C., 1963, who grew up loving comic books and then started to write his own. And when he was 10, wrote his first short story starring Sherlock Holmes. Went to graduate school at the University of California, Irvine. Wanted to be a writer, so he wrote a novel as his thesis. One of his professors sent it off to an agent, and Shaban got a nice advance. The novel came out, The Mysteries of Pittsburgh. It was a bestseller when it came out in 1988. It took him a few years to do his second book, Wonder Boys, 1995, another bestseller. And then Shaban decided to go in a new direction, He had found a box of comics which he'd saved from childhood. He opened it up, the smell came pouring out, and he set out to write an epic story about comic book creators in the 1940s. It was The Amazing Adventures of Cavalier and Clay, a novel that moved from the ghetto of Nazi-occupied Prague to the bohemian nightlife of New York City. And it's the birthday of the poet Joseph Brodsky, born Leningrad, 1940. He was publishing poems by the age of 18. When he was 23, he was charged by the authorities with malicious parasitism, sentenced to five years in a Siberian labor camp. Went back to Leningrad, tried to make a living as a poet, kept getting in trouble with the authorities, and in 1972, the KGB put him on a plane to Vienna. He was taken in by an American professor of Russian literature, introduced to W.H. Auden, who helped secure Brodsky residency in this country. He got teaching positions, and in 1987, won the Nobel Prize in Literature. Here's a poem for today by Julie Cadwallader Staub, entitled Looks. Perhaps everyone else has forgotten it, but in the days when my mother poured her midsection into a girdle, when she gathered her nylons into flimsy donuts before unrolling them up one leg and then the other, in the days when we, her daughters, fastened bulky sanitary napkins to sanitary napkin belts, there was dippity do. My mother dabbed the greenish-blue gel from the jar, reached up, and slid a section of hair through her fingers, then wound the hair around a bristly curler, securing it against her scalp with a plastic curler pin. Now my daughters trap and pull their naturally wavy hair through the jaws of a straightener so that their hair might be as straight as a pin, which is exactly the way my mother used to describe her own hair, and with a sense of tragedy, mine as well. I don't know who decides whether curly or straight is the right look for hair, and I can't say that I care, but what matters to me still is the way the light changed in my mother's eyes as her gaze shifted from her own reflection in the mirror down to mine, the way her exasperation eased with the hair, the dippity do, the curlers, the way the wrinkles over her cheekbones deepened and a smile emerged, as if we were co-conspirators, co-creators in some grand drama, as I handed her another curler, another pin. Here's another poem for today by Annie Lightheart, entitled, On This Date. On this date, many things happened. Governments were heaved into being, creeds were repeated, maps and speeches given and believed. There was quiet on this date. A little boy lived. There was sleep, and one bird call stitched all the way through. On this date, there was longing. Someone walked through a room. One hand brushed loose crumbs into the other. The earth received them out the side door on this date, on this day. Annie Lightheart's poem, On This Date, from her collection, Iron String, 
published by Airly Press and used by permission here on the Writer's Almanac. Here's another poem for today by Julie Cadwallader Staub entitled Looks. Perhaps everyone else has forgotten it, but in the days when my mother poured her midsection into a girdle, when she gathered her nylons into flimsy donuts before unrolling them up one leg and then the other, in the days when we, her daughters, fastened bulky sanitary napkins to sanitary napkin belts, there was dippity do. My mother dabbed the greenish-blue gel from the jar, reached up, and slid a section of hair through her fingers, then wound the hair around a bristly curler, securing it against her scalp with a plastic curler pin. Now my daughters trap and pull their naturally wavy hair through the jaws of a straightener so that their hair might be as straight as a pin, which is exactly the way my mother used to describe her own hair, and with a sense of tragedy, mine as well. I don't know who decides whether curly or straight is the right look for hair, and I can't say that I care, but what matters to me still is the way the light changed in my mother's eyes as her gaze shifted from her own reflection in the mirror down to mine, the way her exasperation eased with the hair, the dippity-doo, the curlers, the way the wrinkles over her cheekbones deepened and a smile emerged, as if we were co-conspirators, co-creators in some grand drama, as I handed her another curler, another pin. Looks a poem by Julie Cadwallader Staub, used by permission of the poet here on the Writer's Almanac. Produced by Kathy Roach and Nick Vetter. Be well, do good work, and keep in touch. <laughs>